Hi, this is Professor Fernandez, and in this video, we are going to learn how to factor quadratic expressions. And we're going to do that by solving this example, example A.6 from the book Calculus Simplified. You'll find this example in the appendix of the book. So the example says, um, well, there's two examples, really. The first one says, factor the quadratic expression x squared plus 2x plus 1. And then the second one is a slightly different expression. So before I go off and start the example, let me just do a quick little review of how we factor expressions of the form x squared plus bx plus c. So what it means to factor an expression like this is that we are looking for linear factors of the form x plus capital A, x plus capital B, that we can, when multiplied together, yield the original quadratic expression. So let's multiply this out on the right-hand side. We're going to use the FOIL method. You might remember that. So this is called uh, the multiplying the first two terms together. So that's going to yield x squared. Then we're going to multiply the outer terms together. So that's the O. <clears throat> so that yields plus bx. Then we'll multiply the inner terms together. That's the I. So that yields plus ax. Uh, and then we multiply the last terms together, that's the L, so FOIL. And that yields plus AB. So we collect like terms here and we get x squared plus A plus B times x plus AB. All right, so at this point, things look a little more complicated than when they initially started, but that's because we're reviewing how to do this in general, and then we'll apply it to the two examples on the left. So remember, we want this expression to be the same as x squared plus bx plus c. So we can now compare the coefficients. So the coefficient of the x here is a plus b. The coefficient of the x here is little b. So that gives us one condition. And then we get a second condition by comparing the coefficient of the uh, number 1, which is just a, b. And the coefficient of the number 1 over here is just c. So these equations look a little complicated, but let's think about what they say. This one says that the capital A and capital B we are looking for, which is going to give us our two factors of this quadratic expression, they have to multiply to the number C, which we get from looking at the quadratic expression. This expression says that the capital A and capital B we're looking for have to add to the little b that we uh, pick out from the coefficient of x in the quadratic expression. So these are the two guiding principles that we're going to use to um, do the examples in a minute. Um, one way that I would suggest that you operationalize these principles is you start with this one first. So another way to express this would be to say that capital A and capital B are factors of little c. So that's one of the way one of the reasons why we call this process factoring quadratic expressions. Okay, so let's go over here and do that to apply this process to the first example. So if we look at uh, this example here, number uh, this number two here is cat is a little b. This number one here is little c. So if we're looking for the factors of little c, the numbers that multiply um, uh, to yield uh, one. So that's certainly one and one, but also we can think in terms of negative one and negative one. That's going to be important for this example later, so I just kind of want to plant the seed that you want to consider also not just positive numbers, but negative ones as well. Okay, great. So we have these two factors. Now we have satisfied, um, or we've, you know, we've uh, investigated this condition. We have found two factors of the little c in this problem, which is the number one. Now let's think about this condition. Of the factors that we found, which are the ones that add to little b? Well, so does 1 plus 1 equal 2? Yes, so these these do it. And you can pretty much stop here, right? You don't have to go off and find other factors. But just to illustrate, you know, negative 1 plus negative 1 is negative 2. That does not equal little b, so we do not want to use these as our factors. Great, so I'm going to erase that and uh, remove some clutter here. So these are the two factors that we want to use. And the nice thing is that once you've done all this work, right, we did all the work over here as well, you know what your factors are. It's literally x plus the capital A you found times x plus the capital B you found. In this case, it's 1 and 1. So this expression equals x plus 1 times x plus 1. And that's it. So to double check, we can FOIL this out. We would do x squared plus x plus another x, and then plus 1 times 1, which is 1. 
I get x squared plus 2x plus 1, which matches with what is up here. So great. These are our factors. All right, so now let's go back and do this all over again for a slightly more difficult example, um, the one over here on the right. So let's give that a shot. So in this uh, example, there's different numbers. So the B here is 3, and then the C here is negative 4. So we're going to have a few more options for factors here. So negative 4, well, it could be viewed as negative 4 times 1. It could also be viewed as uh, negative 1 times 4. It could also be negative 2 times 2, and could also be 2 times negative 2. Okay, so there's lots of options to choose from. But the same question as before, which one of these add, which one of these factors add to the B in this case, which is 3? So you can see that these two are not going to do it because these add to 0. Um, negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3. We're close. So this is really the only one that does it. 4 plus negative 1, 4 minus 1, that's equal to 3. That's the B in this case. So we can finally then say, as before, our factors are x, negative 1, so x minus 1, times x plus 4. And then to double check this again, so we would multiply x squared uh, plus 4x minus x and then minus 4. That gives us x squared plus 3x minus 4. And that's what we started off with. So those are our factors over here. Great. So the last thing I want to leave you with is just a discussion very quickly of what to do. You can see that in both of these examples, um, the coefficient in front of x squared is 1. So that makes life a lot easier. So what if instead of this being the example, it was 2x squared plus 4x plus 2? Right? So how would that have changed what we did over here uh, in the beginning of the video? Well, it doesn't change it by a lot. Because one thing you can always do is you can factor out this coefficient. So if I factor out the 2, I'd be left with x squared. And then here I'd be left with 2x. And then here I'd be left with 1. Which, notice now that this is the exact same quadratic expression we just factored. And we factored that into x plus 1 times x plus 1. So to factor this expression now, our answer would be this which, of course, we can simplify into 2 times x plus 1 squared. So the point being that if you have a coefficient in front of x squared, which is not 1, you can easily factor this out. And then you will have a coefficient in front of x squared, which is 1. And you, you can then apply the procedure that we outlined over here. Um, one thing to note is that when you do this factoring out, you may end up with a fractional number for c. Um, if you do, then that just means that it's going to be a little harder to factor this. And I would probably suggest trying the quadratic equation as a method of factoring. So we'll talk about that in the next video.